Charles. Well, he says he's not concerned about the impact on the elections. I'm sure he's very sincere in that. But it's a little odd that he shows up in the briefing room where he hasn't shown up in the briefing room for about, what, a month and a half on Libya or for anything else for that matter. And then you get the photo ops of him in the Situation Room deploying, I guess, the utility crews who will restore power all over America. Whereas you would think he might want to use the Situation Room and have convened high-level people during the nine hours where our people were under attack in Benghazi. It's hard to look at this playing the president, playing the commander-in-chief on what's a natural disaster that really doesn't require a lot of leadership from the White House. It's up to the governors mostly. The White House and the president release money. That's about all that they do. And he's really good at releasing money uh, and pretend that it isn't about politics. He wants to use this to show himself in command. And I think he might actually be the beneficiary of the fact that all national attention is drawn away for three days. Romney clearly had the momentum. It had slowed down, but it was still heading in his direction. It's not clear what happens when the country sort of wakes up out of this in three days and restarts attention on the campaign, whether that momentum will be gone or not. I mean, that's an open question. You think that that's true, that freezes the race and somehow benefits President Obama? Well, it benefits Obama because he can look presidential. He can go into the briefing room. He can rise above the fray. Romney can't attack him. Uh, it, it, so it, it, we, nobody's talking about Libya. Of course, nobody's talking about Libya anyway. Yeah, I mean, for us. <laughs> really? But, you know. I mean, Kirsten, <laughs> yeah. really? <laughs> Do we have to cross yeah, that today? So, yeah, um, but, now have, yeah. <laughs> but now they have an excuse. Yeah. seemed like uh, the consensus was that uh, President Obama and Mitt Romney were essentially tied, according to many of the polls, while the Obama people are still claiming that he has a little bit of a lead in Ohio. It has changed. The dynamic on the ground in Ohio has changed. Well, look, that lead was huge before the first debate. It's been shrinking ever since. We now have the Rasmussen poll is the first, I believe, of any of them to show Romney actually ahead. The others show that they're being tied, which means it's a dead heat in the state that Obama had in his, his pocket a month ago. You know, if, if you just. So if you're freezing the race, excuse me, if you're freezing the race. You're freezing that closing to some extent, then you leave five days instead of eight days. Uh, I'm not sure it's decisive, but clearly what the polls are telling us that absent this hurricane, it looked like Romney, you know, was the, the slow and steady uh, tortoise in the race. He was going to be, be passing Obama. I think he probably still does. But look, I think you look at the national poll. You cannot, if Gallup is anywhere near right, Gallup has him up six, let's say he's up three. You cannot win a national election by three points and lose in the Electoral College. I mean, of course you can mathematically, but it's almost inconceivable. If you win in the, the, the popular vote, you lose electoral, like in the year 2000, the margin is a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of 1% of one state in the Florida. 3% uh, Romney ahead, he'll win one way or the other. So I think those national polls, even though that, that they are disconnected, you cannot have a disconnect that large between national and electoral college. This has been a Sunfish production.